So question two reads as follows. That is so ugly, I'm just gonna start over. There we go. Question two reads as follows. Confronted with the same unit cost data, monopolistic producer will charge A, the same price and produce the same output as a competitive firm, B, a higher price and produce a larger output than a competitive firm, C, a higher price and produce a smaller output than a competitive firm, or D, a lower price and produce a smaller output than a competitive firm. So what our junior tutor has here is that the correct answer is C, a higher price and produce a smaller output than a competitive firm, and that's correct. The explanation reads as follows. Monopolistic producer will charge a higher price when confronted with the same unit cost data. The manufacturer will also produce less of the item to make it appear more in demand. This, in turn, allows the producer to make more money by spending less on labor and materials. Their overhead is also reduced. This is seen as a competitive way of marketing your product and making it look better and selling faster, making it difficult to keep up with demand, even if it is completely false. So add on to that explanation, I'm again just gonna draw a quick little chart, uh, but first I think I'm actually gonna go over the characteristics of monopoly. So if we can remember, the first characteristic of monopoly is that there's a lack of substitutes. Uh, to help explain this, uh, you can maybe think of like when the Apple iPad was first introduced, they more or less were the only tablet of that quality uh, on the market. So it's not like if you wanted to get a tablet, you could turn from the iPad and switch over to like the Android tablet because it really wasn't on the same level yet. Second, uh, it's gonna be barriers to entry. Just gonna short form that with BTE. So with barriers to entry, that means it's difficult for others to enter the market, which is uh, how a monopolistic firm is able to keep the monopoly on the market. So in this case, say Apple was a little ahead of the game in producing their iPad and Android can't yet just, or Samsung, I should probably say, Samsung can't yet just spit out an, uh, their own competitive tablet because perhaps they haven't developed it yet. Sometimes there are natural barriers to entry uh, and that can be, uh, pretty much anything. For example, uh, I think like Nestle in, in Woodbridge there has a monopoly mainly because they own the rights to the water well. Third is that a monopolistic firm is a price maker. Uh, if you can remember, competitive firms are classified as price takers, which means they don't have any control of what the price is, where when you're a monopolistic firm, you can set the price uh, and how they usually set the price is in a way that maximizes profits. Here I use pi to represent profits, which is pretty common in economic literature. Uh, so these are the characteristics of a monopoly that you should remember. And anytime you see a monopolistic sort of question, you should probably bring these up and go over them and see if they help you clarify the answer. Uh, still continuing on with question two here. I will now draw a graph. Again, typical graph, we've got quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. So the chart for a monopolistic firm looks as follows. We've got demand sloping downwards. For a monopolistic firm, demand also equals the price. We've also got marginal revenue, which slopes down faster than demand and always will for a monopoly. We've got a very poorly drawn ATC curve. And lastly, a marginal cost curve, which begins to slope down at the beginning and then increases as the quantity produced increases. So if we remember for a monopolistic firm to profit maximize, they're gonna produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. That's this point here. And to draw this, you're gonna draw from where marginal revenue equals the marginal cost up to demand. Um, and then you're gonna draw over from demand to where it meets the Y axis. So we will call this price monopoly and quantity monopoly. Oh no, you stay right there. Now the economic profit of a monopoly is from where the quantity supplied goes up to the demand curve and over to the price down to where the, um, I may have drawn this incorrectly. 
Yeah, you would. So you would typically have it where the ATC curve eats, equals the marginal cost. In this case, it happens to be on the demand curve. Sometimes it'll be to the left. Sometimes it'll be to the right. So in this situation, this area in here is going to be our economic profit. Now, it's also important that we com compare this uh, to what a perfectly competitive firm would do so we can see why they would produce at a higher price and produce a smaller output than a competitive firm. So what a competitive firm does is produce, um, because perfectly competitive firms' marginal revenue is equal to demand, they instead produce a higher quantity at a lower price. So what that's going to look like instead like this. So a perfectly competitive firm produces at a higher quantity than a monopolistic firm and at a lower price. And that will be the economic loss for a perfectly competitive firm. So I'm going to verify the solution. Let's say excellent job. Great analysis. Lastly, we're going to move on to